Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 519. Why does BioBalance Health only prescribe testosterone pellets to men and women? BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. There are half a dozen different forms of testosterone that are available in the market. Some designed for men, some designed for women. They each contribute to the the process of rebuilding your testosterone amount in your body that you need to have as you age. Um, Hormone replacement is a real challenging science and art. What Dr. Maupin's practice has learned over the last 15 years is that all of the different varieties of testosterone that are on the market that you can get have drawbacks and issues except for compounded pellets that are inserted under the skin. And as a result of learning that, her practice now only exclusively replaces testosterone hormone with testosterone pellets that are inserted under the skin. So this week what we're going to be talking about is what the other varieties are, what the drawbacks to those varieties are, why the pellets are better, why it's to your advantage to get pellets, and hopefully you'll see more clearly. And also why other doctors don't know this. I mean, that's a, mm-hmm. a factor too. So, so one of the things is there's one type of oral testosterone that the FDA approves of that is made in a form of an, a prescription or an RX that you can go to any pharmacy and get. And that's it. And, and it, Is that a called, liquid or a pill? It's a pill. It's called EstraTest. And it has, the, it has the drawback. I mean, I've used all of these before I found pellets. Mm-hmm. Starting in 1986, when I went into private practice, I found that there were many things that the prescriptions approved by the FDA in the pharmacy could not fix. So when I found that and I figured there should be some way to treat women with hot flashes or who couldn't take oral estrogen or who couldn't take testosterone, and and I knew they needed testosterone, um, they couldn't take it as a pill. Now, they didn't even have that then. They had no testosterone for women. So not only did I not have an appropriate women's testosterone, but I didn't have any. So, so, so I had to look for a type. L- let's talk about the whole concept of off-label use. Mm-hmm. There were no prescriptions for testosterone for women that the mm-hmm. federal government approved of. There right. was nothing in the marketplace. But you know, you knew then, you know mm-hmm. now, women need testosterone. Right. Women manufacture testosterone on their own. Mm-hmm. And as they age, they manufacture less and less and less of it. Or not. But they still need it. Mm-hmm. So in order to get it for them, mm-hmm. if you gave them a men's prescription, were you breaking the law? No. I could, I could have used the men's prescriptions. Um, I didn't do that because I really wasn't, um, I really didn't approve of those either mm-hmm. because I knew how they were metabolized and they made a lot of uh, the, the gels and the creams and the uh, patches for men made a lot of estrone and est- and estrone's an old lady and an old man estrogen and for women that's dangerous for their breasts so and it makes them fat if i use a gel or a patch or cream and i put it on my body i get testosterone mm-hmm. but then my body converts it to estrogen it doesn't as leave it, goes it as through your skin as it goes through the skin to so i don't actually the get skin, the skin you don't ever get the actual dose that testosterone you're getting, yeah that they say on the on the package when you the process of getting through your skin and getting into your circulation changes the testosterone and it's it's up to it's 60 to 80 percent of what your dose is is changed into estrone so men who do patches uh and these are fda approved patches 
get man boobs, belly fat, and eventually they, they're taking it for sex drive. They don't have sex drive because they've got so much estrogen. They're crying at movies and, you know, they're very emotional. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not pretty. Yeah. But women don't need a lot of estrone, the old lady estrogen, either. And so I knew that about creams, gels, so, and... So let's, let's go through each one of those. Uh, a patch. If, mm-hmm. I, if you prescribe mm-hmm. a testosterone patch for me, where do mm-hmm. I put it on my body? You can patches for testosterone can be put on your arm, uh-huh. but they usually had little patches that you put on your on on your scrotum, and that's how it was placed. Okay, which I find to be an issue anyway. If somebody told me I had to put my patch for my hormones on my labia, I'm not sure I would do it. You know, it's a little bit too close to the activity. Uh-huh. You know, it's it's just so it's close to the activity. So yeah. in the midst of the activity, it could come off because things get wet yeah. and sweaty and mm-hmm. whatever. It could come off. Could it attach to the female? Yes. And the so gels, it's just like the nicotine patches. The same thing. Right. If you you put those mm-hmm. on, people say, "Well, you sleep with those on, and you wake up and they're on your wife." Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Because the adhesive. The adhesive, adhesive isn't. It's really so very good. good in either the estrogen patches or the testosterone patches. Okay. The estrogen for women that we do have FDA approved estrogen patches for women. They did not approve the testosterone patch for women, but they approved it for men. So there's many types of testosterone for men and only a pill. So when for they women. when they did this, and we've mm-hmm. we've had other conversations about the FDA approval process mm-hmm. and for years and years in medicine in general. Mm-hmm. All of the research and experimentation was done on male populations. Mm-hmm. They didn't allow women to be in the population group because of the concerns about being pregnant. Unless they were testing birth control pills or, or estrogen. Right. But other medicines right. are normed mm-hmm. against a male population, not right. against a female population. Right. And, and their success with the male population does not necessarily translate to the success with women like Synthroid. Synthroid is much better for men than it is for women. So I don't start with Synthroid. I start with Armour Thyroid. But for men, I start with Synthroid. Okay. But, you know, that those are two thyroid medications. Right. But when I found out in, in 19... I mean, there was nothing in 1986. When I found out that, that women had no progesterone, no natural progesterone they could use for PMS, I had my pharmacy make it. They made suppositories. Well, you, you told me a story one time about making some kind of forgive me, I don't remember accurately, cold cream or something that you put uh, some testosterone in and mixed yourself mm-hmm. for women who had uh, really thin skin around their yes. vagina and, and their buttocks. I actually didn't do it myself. I had, you had I asked the compounding pharmacy okay. to put testosterone powder in Vaseline. Okay. And he assured me that it would penetrate the Vaseline because it fat so- it's fat-soluble that... It has a characteristic of being a fat-soluble uh, hormone. It would go through the Vaseline and get to the skin of the bottom. And it was a, a old lady bottoms are really thin, and they get they get bed sores, and they're really uncomfortable. You can ask your grandmother yeah, about it. Yeah, and, they're, and it's, it's really unpleasant. We're not even talking about sex. We're just talking about living and sitting on your bottom. Right. So uh, I had a lot of nursing home patients in Almost the Almost like beginning. bed sores. Yeah, they were bed yeah. sores. Yeah. And so they wouldn't heal. And we, then you have incontinence as you get older, so they're wet. So it was even it was it was bad. But if we used the testosterone and the Vaseline on their bottoms, they healed, and it kept the water or the urine out from irritating the, the sores. Sore spots. Yeah. So and they got a little bit of extra sex drive and energy. But that's the way we mixed it, and the dose was just meant for local treatment, meaning it just affected. The area around the vagina and a little bit inside the vagina, but that was it wasn't it. like a whole body. It wasn't really meant to penetrate the skin and 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 go to the whole body. It was meant to fix the skin portion. And and for men, if you're using a cream or gel like that on the surface of the skin, you're trying to get or, or the patch whole body. You're trying to get a whole body response, mm-hmm. uh, and almost immediately as it goes through the skin and gets absorbed by my mm-hmm. body it starts the conversion process mm-hmm. into estrogen. Right. And I get some testosterone, mm-hmm. but I don't get what they dose me for. The higher your estrogen, as we've talked about before, the higher your estrogen, the lower your free or active testosterone is. Okay. So higher estrogen, lower free testosterone. So you don't feel it. Even if you're, if, if the total level looks good, the free testosterone, the active portion, is not working. So 
you also have something called testosterone uh, cyprianate, which is a shot. Mm-hmm. And you, I can go to my physician. She can say, you need mm-hmm. testosterone. Uh, testosterone. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you this shot. And you take it every uh, week or every two weeks. Um, women can't do that? This is, it's not a natural testosterone. Because cyprianate, cyprianate is not a natural. is not a natural testosterone. Okay. It has lots of side effects. It makes a lot of what's called DHT, dihydrotestosterone, which for men means they get hairy backs, they lose the hair on their head, mm-hmm. they, um, they may get angry. I mean, there are a lot of different side effects of testosterone cyprianate. And then I will back up and say a few men can take that without side effects, but not very many. But if you give that to a woman, she'll get a beard. She'll lose her hair. I mean, I've seen it. I've seen people who've been on it for a year or more, and th- they don't look normal. Mm-hmm. And they don't really feel normal. They, f- It's much more <clears throat> accentuated on all the side effects, lowering of the voice, high cholesterol, uh, liver abnormalities. There's a lot of things there that are drawbacks to using testosterone cyprinate. So I had to do this for a number of years. Mm-hmm. Before I found you, before mm-hmm. I found out about pellets, mm-hmm. <clears throat> my physician had me on uh, testosterone cyprinate shots. Mm-hmm. And she gave me the bottle uh, with the medicine in it and the needles, and I had to go home and load the dose and mm-hmm. put it in. And there was a challenge about uh, regulation, uh, about my metabolism process. How do I get a measured dose mm-hmm. that lasts for a week or two weeks? Mm-hmm. Uh, b- because it doesn't last. I mean, depending on how active I am, mm-hmm. Uh, how some I weeks it would last, some weeks it wouldn't. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't just mean sexually active. I mean physically no, I know. active. Yeah. I know. Sometimes you could think, sometimes you couldn't think. Right. That's not what we're looking for here. We're looking for for a long-term effect that, help, that I, keeps you the same I, I found emotional day. volatility. Depending uh-huh. on how recently I'd had the shot, I would be more emotionally myself. Mm-hmm. And how far away I got from the shot, I would be angry or reactive mm-hmm. or sensitive. Suddenly mm-hmm. I'm teary and crying. My feelings are hurt. It makes when a lot I, of estrogen I, and DHT. So both of those things would happen. And when the level drops, you're not, you don't feel right anymore. You don't feel good anymore. So, so I was on that when I came to see you, mm-hmm. you said all the things that you're saying now mm-hmm. about the, this is not the optimal way to go. We can do this and you can ride this roller coaster and it'll help you mm-hmm. with, and, and the doctor told me it'll help you with uh, muscle mass, uh, mood, stability is as long as we have the dose right it won't help with sex drive it won't help you be able to have children you can't get enough right. for that but but we, these other things have value so we want to do them well it might help you with sex drive but... well it won't help you with having children she said and there was she was very mm-hmm. clear about that. if you still want to try to have kids this this won't do it for mm-hmm. you um uh, what you said was we can put the testosterone in this pellet this micronized pellet mm-hmm. that we not make. Micronized. Not micronized. I'm sure I get that wrong every yeah. time. It's non- not micronized. It's powder. Powder. It's pressed powder. So what? And the difference is? Micronized is little balls that keep circulating in your body, and they act a lot like the testosterone cyprinate. Okay. Guys lose their hair. They get hair on the ba- their backs on their backs. They get angry. They have a lot of DHT, so they don't feel normal. They aren't normal. All right. So, so that's the micronized testosterone is not something you'd give a woman or something you'd give a, a man if you knew the difference. You would only use the pressed powder. So you said, I have these pellets that I can put in your hip, uh, in the fat of your hip. Mm-hmm. They're fat soluble. Every four they will months. last for four months, four and you'll six. have the same. Once we track and know mm-hmm. what your metabolic processing mm-hmm. is, you'll have the same dosage every day that mm-hmm. you need. Mm-hmm. It won't go up and down. Your mood won't fluctuate. Mm-hmm. You won't uh, have all of these side You won't have any of those side effects that you have now on the shots. Mm-hmm. So, And I said, sign me up. Right. And that's, so what I want to, I, I want to point out is the FDA does not have anything for women that is appropriate. They don't have pellets. They don't have, we have to go outside the FDA to find the right thing for women and for men because of side effects and um, length of time that they're effective. The next thing you have to look at is, how many times do I have to think about this during the day? Because I don't think 
my husband would do something, take a pill or do anything, put a patch on, put a cream on more than once a day. He's never going to take a twice a day medication, and most men won't. Maybe women will take it once a day, take medicine once a day, but it's very hard for them to get a second dose in. So if one of the reasons that I'm interested in taking testosterone is to restore my sex drive or my sexual functioning, mm -hmm. do like with the Viagra and stuff, you need a lead time. You need so many minutes before you want to be active. Do you with the creams or gels or patches? Okay, so no. I mean, the creams, gels, and patches are on there daily. You have to put them on on the same okay. daily or twice a day, depends on the uh, on the medication. And so you're saying men resist doing that? Most men aren't going to remember it. Yeah. They're just going to forget. Well, you get and, busy. You leave your house and right. you go to work and you don't take it with you. and Right, and then then it's three days and then you just give up. So most people who do, do FDA-approved testosterone just give up because... It's a daily, once or twice a day dose. You're going to forget it. We're not going to know if you forgot it. You're not going to remember if you forgot it. You're not going to be compliant because it takes mental um, uh, focus, not clarity, awareness. but focus. But also, yeah. you, you have to be disciplined. Determination. And, and mm -hmm. that means you can't go out and have a good time because you're not going to be disciplined on those days. I mean, a lot of times, young younger men, I mean, when we're 80, we probably have nothing else to do, but... Not necessarily, but maybe. But but looking at how often you dose a drug is very important. And so it's been important because of half life. That's what I was going to say. Talk about that. Right. So so every drug is dosed based on how long it lasts in your sip in your system at a clinically active level. Okay. So half life is halfway through before it's out of your system. And that's when you redose. Okay. So when when a drug's halfway out of your system, it's still clinically active. Then we redose it at the number of hours or number of days that half of it is gone. Well, testosterone pellets can be dosed for women at the dose that we give them and the size of the pellet. We give they are out of your system or half of it is out of your system in three months or four months, depending on the size of the pellets and the dose. But for men, we dose them with larger pellets and more of them, and half of it's out of your system in general in six months. Mm -hmm. So six months, twice a year, you go to the doctor. Most people taking shots don't get to inject themselves themselves uh, because they don't know how or they don't have somebody to do it for them, or they might make a mistake and hit a vessel. So they have to go to, to these uh, clinics every two weeks and get a shot. And some men need it every week. Yeah. So you're spending all your time going to a clinic. So, it, but uh, compliance is what I'm talking about. Yes, I, I understand that. You but do, there's, can you do this? There's a segue I want to make about go, returning to the conversation about estrogen and the conversion into estrogen. Mm -hmm. If I'm going and getting the shots, or if I'm putting the gel or the patch or the cream mm -hmm. on, it's immediately converting into estrogen, and I'm not getting the full effect of the testosterone that I'm supposed to be right. getting mm -hmm. with the pellet. Generally, men don't convert that much of it into estrogen. Right. The it's, ones who tend to, you have a treatment for that as well. Right. And so they don't, it's not nearly the same percentage. It's a very small percentage, but just enough that they convert, that it lowers their free testosterone so they don't feel it as long or right. they don't feel good, as good as they should. Mm -hmm. So we use Arimidex in the pellet. Arimidex is an a enzyme blocker that blocks the conversion of testosterone into estrogen. The problem with that is it doesn't block it when you're using a gel or a patch because that conversion is in the skin. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, the Arimidex doesn't block oh, so that. You, you take Arimidex in the pillow or you can also take it as, orally. A, as a pill. Yeah, it has a lot of side effects orally, so I try not to do it orally. I put right. it into the pellet. So there's a no-brainer there. The patient doesn't have to think about that either. Mm -hmm. It's in their pellet. Okay. So we don't have to add another drug. So that that's what we're trying to do is so, make it easy because then my patients will do it. The goal is to get the right dose of mm -hmm. testosterone in the system mm -hmm. that doesn't convert to estrogen, mm -hmm. that doesn't uh, fluctuate randomly mm -hmm. based on are you paying attention, did mm -hmm. you remember, is it 2 o'clock, what are you doing, stop what you're doing. And there's a second problem with, with if you forget it. Your doctor doesn't know if you forgot it, and you don't remember if you forgot it. And then you have a lot of complaints about, ah, oh, this didn't work. Right. It did this. It did that. Well, I don't. I don't know for sure you took it every day. Mm -hmm. I don't know for sure you took it twice a day. So, 
for me, then I, it's like, you know, <laughs> it's like battling jello. I mean, I don't know what to do with you because I don't know what your dose really was. So even if I have blood test, one more critical piece about dosage. Mm-hmm. You are a specialist. You have training and experience in assessing the proper dose for men and women. Mm-hmm. And I mean, some of us are small, some of us are large, some of us are active, some mm-hmm. of us are inactive, some mm-hmm. of us have other health problems. I mean, part of the process that you go through is understanding my health condition. Individually, yes. Individually, me, uniquely me. Mm-hmm. And you, you do blood tests. And you look at my medical history and you talk to me about what issues I may have. And I have an hour to talk to you. And you and take an hour to do And that's a it. whole different thing yeah. when I can kind of figure out your lifestyle. What do you eat? How much do you exercise? Do you really exercise that much? How much do you work? Do you sleep? All of those things are things that change the dose that is necessary to keep you healthy So and to take away your symptoms. Men and women mm-hmm. who are considering hormone replacement as a, as a health strategy, mm-hmm. need to go then to a specialist, not to a high-volume clinic, not to a doctor who just does, it once in a while. does it occasionally, uh, or to one who hasn't been trained. I mean, for a while you were training other doctors to mm-hmm. do what you do. Uh, now your volume is you're bi- you're well, too honestly, busy and you don't do it. it took longer than two to three days to train right. them. It took months. Right. And they didn't have the months to give to that, and I was seeing patients. So... I didn't have the months to give to it. Right. It is not something that you can just read a book and learn and do, which is what people think. Because it varies with every individual person. It's individualized medicine, mm-hmm. not high volume mass medicine. And you have you have to be able, as a physician or a nurse practitioner, you have to be able to in your head see how this hormone the interplay of all these yeah, things. Yeah, how this hormone can convert into something else or what effect it has on your thyroid or what effect it has on your adrenal gland and the adrenal hand gland has on it and be able to see all of that at once and then figure out your dose. It looks a little simpler than that because you can't see inside my head, but I'm taking into uh, into my method all of the things you've told me and then figuring out a dose. Even then, the first dose may not be the last dose. I may try that dose and you may have a genetic It almost certainly is the, the first dose won't be. The first dose is, is a guesstimate based on all the information that you have. Mm-hmm. Then you take it for a trial run. You come back and mm-hmm. say, how's that working? How do you feel? Mm-hmm. And then you fine-tune it so that they ride those waves in a consistent way. So if, that, if, I have, if I have compounded but not pellets or if I have FDA approved, that's the only thing they got going for them. I have to look at the benefits. I have to look at the risks. And then I have to look at if my patients are actually going to, to actually continue this treatment and keep themselves healthy. Right. So those are things that I have to look into before I decide this is what I want to do. Now, I used to do them all before pellets. They made people kind of better, but with lots of risks and a lot of drawbacks. As After I had my ovaries out and after... That experience and nothing worked for me except pellets. I realized that there was more to hormone replacement, like quality of life, like getting back to normal, like having your brain work, like having energy. I mean, it's not just about have, not having hot flashes, you know. So, so I realized it was very complex. So I choose pellets. You choose pellets. They are the most effective, least side effect. And one thing we didn't talk about today, they're the least expensive. Uh, way to get consistent dosage of testosterone. Right. So hopefully this will be beneficial for you in discussing with your physician whether or not you're a candidate for hormone replacement. And if you are such a candidate, find an expert. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.